Okay, so let's look at how to create and edit shapefiles in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, this is what you're going to be doing if you have to create your own data uh, for the most part. One common way of creating data is by tracing it off of aerial photo photographs. And so I've got the imagery layer inserted here. So all I did was go to base map imagery uh, and I've got that. So we're going to trace Esri's imagery for practice, although uh, often you would be tracing the imagery acquired by your own company or organization. Uh, what we'll do today is we'll create a shapefile for buildings and we'll practice putting in some attributes for those. Um, and then we'll make a shapefile for the roads and uh, trace some of those. So what I've done here to prepare is I've added a connection to my data folder and then I created this folder called business park that's empty. And that's going to hold these shapefiles. So to create a new shapefile, we need to run a tool called Create Feature Class. And the way we do that is go to the Analysis tab and then click Tools. And you can search for it here. Now it's already visible because I've had this open earlier today. And, uh, but if you search for it, you'll see a dialog like this and you can open the tool. Now remember that the Feature Class is Esri's term for um, a shapefile or a file geodatabase feature class. Esri's trying to get people to use their file geodatabase format. It's a little more modern, has more possibilities than shapefiles. Um, however, shapefiles are still wildly popular and openly documented. So I'm going to show you how to create a shapefile. So we're going to change this. Uh, it's looking for a geodatabase now. It's going to, by default, use the one that you have in your project. Uh, I'm going to change this and just put it in the business park folder that I made that's empty. And then I'll call this buildings and when I put .shp, that, then it knows that I'm going to create a shapefile, so it will do that for me. Uh, the geometry type for this is polygon. If we were zoomed way out, maybe a building would just be a little point on the map, but here we're zoomed in, so we need a polygon shape. And then everything else we're going to leave the same. Now when you create any kind of new data set, it's really important to designate what coordinate system the coordinates will be stored in. And when you're editing off of imagery like this, it's a good practice to start out by matching the coordinate system of whatever the imagery is. This imagery is uh, using the Mercator projection, same one that Google Maps uses, ArcGIS Online Web Viewer. Um, so if you go to this drop down and choose current map, uh, it will get the coordinate system of the current map and use that. So uh, Maybe not the greatest in some situations to be editing in Mercator, but for practice we're going to do that. Um, if you wanted, you could choose any coordinate system off of here. So let's click Run, and it's going to make this feature class. Uh, notice that it showed up here. We can call it feature class or shape file, I guess. Uh, we can right-click this and view the attribute table. Not much there, because we haven't put any buildings in yet. But we also need to add potential columns. So right now, when you create an empty shapefile, you get these three columns for free. You get an ID that the software manages. Uh, you get the shape geometry column that the software manages. You don't touch those. Uh, it gives you an ID that uh, you can use if you want. And then you can add your own fields here. Uh, let's add one for the building name, for example. And it's important to choose the field data type. Uh, the name is going to hold text, not numbers. So we need to change this. Long means long integer. So it, it would be looking for a number. Uh, I'm going to change that to text. Um, another thing uh, we have that might be a number is the number of stories in the building, uh, how many floors it has. So I'm just going to double click here and I'll change this to short. That's a short integer. In Geography 303, uh, the data management class, we'll get into more detail on all these different uh, data types. Um, if you need a decimal number, you would choose float or double here instead of short or long. Um, and then let's look at the, the owner. We'll put that. That's also going to be a text field. Okay, if we like this set of fields, uh, we need to go up here and click Save. That will apply the changes, and then we close out of this view, and notice a bunch more editing options open up to us on the top. Uh, and now we see these new columns here ready to have data in them. So let's add some data. Let's click Create here, and you see the things that you're able to create. Right now we have one editable layer. It's the buildings. So uh, let's choose to create a polygon. Notice all these other advanced editing tools for making different shapes. Uh, we're going to do something simple now and uh, just trace this building. And we're just going to double click to finish. 
And now we can fill in um, the different attributes for here. Uh, maybe this is a dentist office. Uh, we'll put two stories and owner. Let's make something up for practice. Uh, then maybe we want to do another one, so we trace this building here. I'm just doing kind of a quick and dirty sketch. Maybe this is a coffee shop. And uh, when we're done adding things, uh, it's really important to go up here and click Save, Save Your Edits. Um, if you fail to do this, um, your stuff is not going to be in the database next time you open your map. And this is confusing sometimes to new students because there are two areas where you can save. You might be used to going up here and saving your project in ArcGIS Pro. That just saves the things like the colors of your layers and the layer order. Uh, whereas if you want to save the actual data that you edited, uh, you need to go and save your edits on this screen, okay, right here under the Save button. Uh, let's create a line feature class now. This is going to be a little different. So if I go back to the geoprocessing, I've got this tool all open still. Uh, so I'm just going to change a few things. Let's do the let's call this roads, and we'll make some uh, polyline one. And we're going to leave the coordinate system the same. That's fine. And we'll run this. So now we've got roads over here, uh, which will allow us to add uh, more things into our map. And the first thing we'll do is uh, open the attribute table for that. And let's, again, define the columns that we want to work with. So we'll click Add. And uh, let's say well, we want to have the road name for sure. So that makes sense. Uh, so we're, that's going to be text. Uh, we could have the road surface type. Maybe that's also text. We could even uh, have that affect our sim symbology. So we could have a paved surface be gray and a dirt surface be um, brown or something like that. Okay. Uh, so for simplicity, let's just leave it at that. I'm going to close this. Oh, cancel. It's reminding me I need to save. So I'm going to save those settings, close this out. And now I can create road features. Now, something that I found is um, sometimes when you make a new feature class and you click create, the panel goes blank over here. And so if that happens to you, you're going to close it out and then open it again. It's just a software quirk that I'm sure they're trying to work out. So it's kind of annoying, but good to know about. All right, so let's to make a road, we'll click that and we'll use the line tool and this will allow us to trace a line. So let's zoom back a little bit and trace this road. Now for straight areas, we don't have to put down very many vertices. When it curves, we want to do them a little more frequently just so we have a nice smooth curve on this road. That's good for now. Um, and let's fill this out. So that's a nice paved road. Uh, maybe we can do like a little gravel road going back into here so we can try a different surface type. So again, we're going to create a line. Um, now, one hard part about editing is if you're going to connect a line onto this road, you want to make sure you hit this right on. And that can be difficult to click on exactly the right pixel to intersect this, this road correctly. So the way we deal with that is by enabling something called snapping, which makes it so when you get your cursor close by it snaps onto that feature and makes sure that it it connects because you don't want to overshoot or undershoot the existing road so you have to click this square up here that says snapping and now it turned to dark blue and you enable what types of snapping you want so you can snap to the intersection of things uh, you can snap to the edge of things Okay, so here I'm ready to snap. Um, I had to turn snapping on and off a few times. Again, I think that's due to the software quirk, um, which 
uh, with Esri and actually all other GIS products, uh, you'll run into bugs. Uh, with ArcGIS Pro, it's a newer piece of software, so you hit more of them. And uh, usually if you just try something a second time or turn it off and on, you have better results. So I just turn snapping off and then back on. Here's what it's supposed to do. So if you hover over uh, any vertex, um, it will, and you get close to it, it will snap right on and then you can connect. So let's suppose that this is a gravel road. Looks like part of it might be paved, but it's just like a driveway. So now let's modify the attributes for that. So this is an unnamed uh, driveway, and we could say that it is gravel. Remember, uh, at this point, we want to save our edits. Uh, do that frequently as you create things. And now, uh, let's enjoy the stuff that we've edited. So if we take off the imagery, we can see the stuff we made, and we can make a map of it. So we could do... Um, change the road symbol, for example. Uh, maybe we can change the buildings type, building footprint. Okay, we can make our own symbols, and if we do a nice job of tracing this, um, then we can remove the imagery if needed, and we have our own data.